Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for coming back. I'm Jim, if you're new here, and this is my tutorial series on Luminar AI by my friends over at Skyloom Software. This is episode number three, and we're tackling the catalog. Episode one and two, I'll link to up there. Episode one was the kind of getting started video about the user interface and getting familiar with it. Episode two was a closer look at things in order to quickly get you started editing your photos and having results. Episode three is the catalog, and that's where you basically view and select the photos you're gonna edit. We're gonna dive in. I'm gonna show you some ins and outs and things you need to be aware of to use it properly if you're gonna use it. You don't have to use it. It does work as a plugin to Lightroom, for example, if you manage your catalog over there. But if you're like me and you have a catalog in Luminar AI, this video is for you. Let's get going. Here I am. Now, I've already shown you in the previous videos where you can click a plus here to add a folder with images or a single image. And I'm gonna stay in the whole catalog tab for this video. On the right-hand side, you can also see this is the demo files folder, but I've also got a file folder called Canada. Now, one of the great things about Luminar, I think, is that it doesn't pull the photos in and place them inside of Luminar and build a large database for you. It just mirrors or reflects the folders that you point it to, basically. So this demo files folder is on my desktop, but this Canada folder, which by the way, you can see it's nested. You see a little arrow there. If I click that, you can see I've got three or four, I guess four different folders that are subfolders to the main Canada folder. But the thing is, they're on an external drive, and while I have it connected, you can access the photos. Now to add additional folders, you can just click here, this plus sign, just like you can in that upper left. And on my desktop, I'll go to my desktop, I have this miscellaneous new shots. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that folder on or in to Luminar as well. And you'll see that that pulls through. And this is just a random collection of photos from a couple of different outings recently here in my hometown. Now, if you ever need to do something different with these folders, you can right click. And when you right click, you'll see that you have additional options. You have the ability to import additional images to that specific folder. You can put a subfolder beneath it. You can show it in the Finder. That's, of course, a Mac thing in Windows, maybe File Explorer. I'm not sure what it's called. You can rename this if you want to. You can take it out of the catalog, uh, delete forever, or you can add it to the shortcuts, which are at the top. Now, shortcuts, as the name implies, basically give you a quick access to certain components of your catalog. So. For example, you start with all photos, and there's currently 4,606 photos in this catalog. So if you click this drop down, you can see it automatically categorizes them by year, which I think is pretty awesome. And I'm gonna use 2017 as an example because there's over 3,500 photos from 2017 here in the catalog right now. You can see it's also clickable. So if you click on that, you can see it breaks it down by month. And then further, I'm gonna click on July because there's so many, it even sub-segments them by day. So I can look at this and see, oh, it took 499 photos on Sunday, July 9th, 2017. Let me click on that. I wonder where I was because it doesn't tell me where I was, but now I look at it and say, oh, that's Canada. I remember that trip. There we were doing all these great things in Banff National Park and me taking photos that I love of a place that I just want to move to, to be honest. Anyway, that is how that works. So it's a really cool bit of organization that allows you to quickly get access to certain dates or times. I'm gonna collapse that a little bit further. You've also got single image edits, which I talked about in that previous video. Those are photos that you're just sticking in the single image edit pane, so you can quickly edit them without adding them to the folder structure in your catalog. And to be clear, as I said, the folder structure, and we're gonna get into that in a second, it just mirrors the folder structure on your hard drive or on your external drive, wherever you're pulling the photos from, it's mirroring that structure. Single image edits is basically outside of that structure. You've got recently added, which is basically all of these because that I just put these in here. And recently edited, I've not really done any editing since I put these in here because I've been making these videos about how to get started. I'll be getting to editing real soon. So that's that. You also have trash. Now, let me show you how trash folder works. You can see it's grayed out, which means there's nothing in trash. And of course, there's a zero there. But if I go to demo files, you can see I've got this file here. And in the bottom right corner, you can see it's a .nef file, which is a Nikon RAW file. And if I click the second one, it's copy number two of the same file. So basically, I have the same file in here twice. Well, hey, I don't really need the same file in here twice. So what I can do 
is take this second one and I'm just going to drag it over to the trash and it's now gone from my Luminar view and you will see that my trash folder now has one. However, what I want to point out is I'm going to open a finder window and I'm going to click on desktop. I'm going to open demo files and this D0124 copy two is still in my folder. So putting it in the trash in Luminar is just taking it out of the view of Luminar. It's not taking it out of the folder that it started in. So there's the original, which is copy, and then here's copy two, which is the one I just dumped in the trash. So keep that in mind. You're not, when you put it in the trash in Luminar, all you're doing is getting it out of the view of Luminar. It's still in the folder that it began in. Now, let me click over here and let me do something. I'm gonna go to trash and I have one photo and I'm gonna empty trash. And it's gonna say, are you really sure? Because you're gonna move this to system trash. So I'm gonna say move to trash. There's nothing left in trash. If I go back to demo files, I still have that one, which is the original. And now if I open that in Finder, you will see here's D0124 copy and copy two is gone. So when I emptied the trash in Luminar, it took it out of the folder on my drive. Now not to worry, there's still a fail safe, which is it's been moved to your system trash. So I can go get system trash and I can go find that photo. And here it is, D0 whatever copy two. There it is. I'm going to move that back. I'm going to stick that back on my desktop. And in fact, while I'm at it, um, it's on my desktop. I'm just going to pick it up and I'm going to stick it back on to demo files and close this. And you will see here in a second, it's going to pop back into Luminar. There it is. If I click on that and you look at the file number, there's copy two. So just keep that in mind. The first deletion from Luminar, putting it in the trash folder, all it does is take it out of the view of Luminar. You have to empty the trash to get it out of the file folder, but then it goes to your system trash. And once in your system trash, you would have to empty, have to empty that to completely rid your computer and drive and everything of that file. So you've got several fail safes. Fail safes. In other words, you're not going to accidentally delete a bunch of stuff that you might want. Now, while we're at it, I also want to show how the file and folder structure mirrors each other between Luminar and your drive. So demo files, I'm in that, which is on my desktop, as you can see, and I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to call this need to edit. And I'm going to click enter and close that. And you will see in my demo files folder, I now have a subfolder called need to edit. And so when I create that subfolder on my drive, it's creating that subfolder in the same place within Luminar. So now what I could do is I could come over here and take whatever photos I want, drag them over there. Next time I open Luminar, I could go to my need to edit folder and say, okay, these were the next ones I was gonna edit, let me get to it. And basically that's a way to help you move around, control, do whatever you wanna do to your folder structure. You can also delete this, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say delete forever and no worries. The folder is moved to the system trash. You can't undo it, that's fine. In the system trash, you could recover it if you had photos in it, but I don't. And I'm gonna go back to demo files. So that's an example of how the folder structures mirror each other. It operates the same whether it's on an internal drive like that one or on an external drive like this Canada folder. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse that. By the way, I can click plus. Here's my external drive. It's a five terabyte C drive. I've got a photo library here. And you can see here, I've got photos from Anguilla. Austin, I have all these subfolders. And for me, that's the big thing about starting to use a catalog or a library, especially if that's new to you and you're newer to photography, is figure out whatever organization pattern or structure works best for you and adopt that. I do it by location and then by date. So in Austin where I live, I have it by shoot name and date, but in other places like Europe, for example, I'll have it by location and then date. So Germany, Munich, April, 2017, Iceland, disc one, Iceland, disc two, etc. You know, Italy, 2016, Amalfi Coast, whatever. That's how it works for me. I could add all these. Now I'm not gonna do that because it'll take a minute, but you can keep your files on an external drive, on an internal drive, whatever. I personally recommend having them on an external drive because then you can move it computer to computer. It's also a fail safe kind of redundant plan, but you can come in and what will happen is just like with Canada, as I imported this with the four subfolders, it shows up with the same subfolder structure over here in the folder area of your catalog. So I think we've covered that enough. And now what I wanna talk about is albums. 
and albums are basically a virtual grouping or a virtual collection of photos. So I could start, I could take these three photos, let me highlight them, and I could come over here to albums and I could say plus, and I could say family, double click that, call it family, and now I've got a virtual album that has photos of people in the family. I can go back to demo files. They're still there. I didn't move them. It's a virtual grouping, but it's a way to organize virtually photos from different albums. So I could pick photos from this demo files folder. I could pick some from this miscellaneous new shots. I could pick some from Canada. It doesn't matter. I could pick them from any folder that Luminar has visibility to and stick them in an album of my choosing. So I could group as I edit and go through things here in this demo folder, I'll start creating an album of favorites. Maybe what I'll do is I'll edit photos here and think that'll make a good video. And so I can create an album called to be made into a video or make a video or whatever. And then I could drop my photos in there. And the next time I come in here and say, hey, I'm gonna make a video, I'll go look at my to make a video about it folder, excuse me, album, and then figure out which one I wanna use and go from there. So it's a way to collect photos together from different folders into an album, which is also a virtual collection. I hope that helps. Bottom line is you have various different ways to organize yourself in the catalog within Luminar. And again, I go back to what I said earlier, which is figure out your best method of organization and adopt that and get your files structured the way you like them structured before you start sticking them in here. I just think it's gonna help you with your organization and being able to find the photos that you wanna edit because that's really what the catalog section of Luminar is for. To me, this is the discovery field. This is my field of view that says, this is the field of possibilities. I wanna go edit something. This is what I have visibility to. And then you go from there to either templates or edit and then export when you're finished. Now, another thing that you can do is synchronize edits from photo to photo. So let's say I have this photo here, a shot from Dublin, it's a beautiful sunset. And here's another one shot from the same evening, slightly different view down the river Liffey. But I've edited this one, I have not edited that one, but hey, I want them to look the same. So what I do is I click on the edited one, and then I'll just shift and click on the second one, and you'll see it's highlighted. Then I can come up here to image and adjustments and sync adjustments. And as you can see, it applied the same edits to that second photo that were already applied to the first one. So that's a great way if you've got a group of photos from a same shot, or you have a specific look that you like and you wanna stick them on countless photos, you edit one, you get the look set you want, and then you can just sync adjustments and you can come through and you could choose different photos. I could choose this one here as well. I could sync, uh, let's see, I will just highlight a couple. Now these may not look very good because they're all completely different conditions, but I'm gonna sync these other two with that one as well. So I'm gonna say image, adjustments, sync adjustments, and you can see it's adjusted. Again, the color tones are off because that was a sunset edit and this was a cloudy day edit, so they kind of look bad. The point is you can do it and I wanted to show you how. If you don't like it, just go back to adjustments and say revert to original. And I actually had the original one highlighted, so I undid that one as well. But you know what, that doesn't matter because I've got that edit on this one. So now I could just come over here and sync it back the other way and just say adjustments, sync adjustments, and I've got that one back too. Sometimes you mess up and you find a way out of your mistakes. And the last piece to talk about, and I mentioned this in a previous video, is the sorting. So you can sync, or excuse me, you can show all photos, you can show just your favorites or just edited. Since I've now done a couple of edits, let's click edited and you'll see I've got a few photos that I've applied a few minor edits to. That's a way to do that. I'm gonna go back to all photos because I've really not edited very many in the catalog just yet. Also on this right hand side, you can sort it by lots of different things and ascending or descending. So maybe you're looking for a specific file type or a file name, capture time, edit time, whatever. You have options there. I tend to leave it at capture time. It is a way to get organized, although I tend to use folders and albums and I would prefer to organize that way. But the point is you have some flexibility and speaking of faves, you can also fave photos. Again, I talked about that in a previous video, but if you click that heart, you can fave a photo, and then if you decide to sort by faves, you will find that photo there. And the last thing is there's a search function. So I'm gonna click search, and you can search for NEF files with NEF in the name, and they found 562 items. This, and when you click it, it'll come up. Now this is a raw file extension for Nikon raw file format uh, shots. These were photos taken back when I had a Nikon, which was many years ago. So for example, if I wanted to find my Sony images instead, that is ARW, 
and it says there's 2278. So when I click on that, that's gonna come up with all my Sony RAW files. And you can see, by the way, also recently searched has shown up here. I'm not interested in sticking with this search. I'm gonna go back to my demo files folder. And the last thing, and I covered this in another video as well, in this upper right-hand corner, you have the ability to adjust the size of these preview photos. So I tend to like it small, but you've got several choices there and you can adjust that to your taste. And that's really it on the catalog, my friends. That's how it works. That's a few tips, some tricks, some information that's hopefully helpful to you in helping you get organized and get started quickly with Luminar AI and the catalog specifically. That was video three. I'll be back tomorrow with video number four. I appreciate you watching very much. Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And don't hesitate to leave me comments, feedback, or questions down below. I'll do my best to answer. And I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and adios.